Today we're going to talk about the Sandbanks Peninsula Management on the south coast. Uh, this is to fit in with the OCR bit of the course, uh, which is 4.A, uh, case study of one coastal landscape that has been managed. Um, so we're going to be looking at that. Um, as I mentioned, it's on the south coast. It's um, near Poole and Bournemouth. Um, the area I've circled in orange is the area we're going to be mainly focusing on, but it's part of this wider subcell, um, which is um, managed by Poole Borough Council, the Harbour Commissions and the Environment Agency. These are the groups that are involved in managing it. And the key thing that I that really need to know about this system is that uh, we can see those blue arrows um, going um, from... Uh, left to right, um, that is the dominant longshore uh, drift direction. So um, it's moving the sediment um, towards the east. However, there's, that isn't the only kind of longshore drift direction. Um, there is a secondary one when the winds change, when it's not that southwesterly wind that's blowing, uh, the, the sediment can be pushed back the other way towards sandbanks, and that is significant for how we look at the management um, of this case study. So the question you need to ask is why do we need to manage sandbanks? Sandbanks is this kind of um, peninsula and there's several reasons why we should manage this, um, this area. The first reason is um, it's right on the kind of uh, the tip of the entrance to Pool Harbour and this is where you get cross-channel ferries. So there's important kind of um, uh, passenger ferries that, that go into uh, Pool Harbour via the end of sandbanks uh, but also kind of commercial um, ships that kind of bring logging and, and other kind of uh, products across uh, and if the longshore drift that, that secondary um, wind direction we saw just a second ago if it was able to kind of do its natural course then the sediment might go into this kind of entrance to the harbour and make it shallower build up over time and therefore it would stop ferries being able to actually uh, do what they do and transport people uh, because they wouldn't be able to get the ships through. Um, another big reason is the fact that this uh, peninsula uh, actually takes a lot of the impact of the wave action that's coming at it. Therefore, the area behind it, um, so Pool Harbour, is actually really sheltered from that wave action and therefore it's kind of a really nice place for leisure activities involving the ocean, so water sports, sailing and water skiing. Uh, so these are kind of really kind of kind of key reasons um, why sandbanks should be preserved. Also, this is an incredibly important area in terms of residential and commercial um, opportunities in this area. So some of the residential properties here are some of the most expensive per square meter in the world. Um, a large detached house here will cost you ten million, a flat two million. So there's some really expensive properties that that if they weren't managed and were damaged would cause a lot of you know financial issues we can also say it's an area for um tourist attraction the beach here is a blue flag beach which means it's like an award-winning beach and the water quality is great so it draws people into this area similarly um they've got some really key important local uh, businesses like the Havens Hotel or the Sandbanks Hotel slightly up the coast and these are both important areas for empl employment and also the kind of places that money gets spent and so money gets circulated in this local economy. So these are some key reasons why Sandbanks gets a lot of management because there's lots of different factors that make it an important place. The last major reason that we need to consider in terms of scale and time in the future is that Climate change is going to happen and this will cause sea level rise. Um, this in an area like Sandbanks will cause flooding and with an expected rise of about 0.6 metres in the next 100 years, it means that this kind of uh, little connecting piece that connects it to the, ma uh, the mainland, which is its lowest point and, and not very um, wide, could get overtopped and eventually could flood, which would cut the rest of Sandbanks off from the mainland. Um, this kind of flooding, if it happened on a large scale um, and there wasn't, they took all the way management that they do at the moment, there is like 18 million pounds worth of damage because the properties are so lucrative here. So there are significant reasons why we should manage sandbanks now and continue to do it in the future, largely because of economic and financial um, reasons and incentives. 
there are a couple of ways in which they have chosen to manage uh, the Sandbanks Peninsula. Um, on the left here, we have something called beach recharge. This is where you're taking um, sediment from offshore and kind of putting it onto the beach. It can sometimes get sediment from other places, but you're basically building up beaches uh, in this process called rainbowing. And you can see in the picture there, it's, it's like the arc of a rainbow where um, sediment is pumped onto the beach and it builds up that beach area. The other um, kind of more kind of common technique um, is using rock groins. These stop the, the natural process of longshore drift, and so the sediment gets trapped behind it, and over time, this therefore builds up um, you know, a wide beach, which will, again, protect these properties from um, wave action and erosion. So these are the techniques that they kind of employed in the Sandbanks Peninsula. We now need to look and see how successful these are. So in terms of success, looking at the Sandbank Peninsula, these groins obviously did stop the longshore drift from happening, it stopped that sediment from infilling the harbour entrance, and because of that it means shipping lanes can be kept open. So that is successful. These groins and the recharge also, they're stopping the, um, the longshore drift, but they're also building up the beach. It creates a really, really wide beach um, at sandbanks and therefore we have that as i said before the wave energy and erosion rates which would be in this area quite high it says that 1.6 meters a year of land would erode backwards if there was no management so having these groins and recharge actually create a buffer that protects um, uh, the properties behind it but because of this beach that's been created by the groins and the recharge working um, in, in unison with each other. So the last bit I'm going to talk about really is one of the ways that they slightly change the management rather than just doing that beat recharge where they kind of put dump the sediment onto the beach. They started to try this technique where they're actually dredging sediment from Pool Harbour, which is what we can see um, slightly in the background and then dumping it slightly out to sea. Uh, the reason they're doing this is because, as we know, over time, constructive waves will move that sediment inward. And so it's using the natural process of the wave action for that sediment to be moved in naturally and to build up the buffer of the beaches there. This is good in, in, and successful in a couple of ways because use the natural systems uh, and it's kind of using nature so it's working with nature but the also the other factor is it's a lot cheaper than doing kind of the traditional rainbowing or recharge so it costs about three pounds per meter cubed rather than 20 pounds a meter cubed so there is again success in the new techniques they're training in terms of sustainability but also in terms of costs financially the one counterpoint to this is we can be critical of this type of management in terms of the scale of, uh, of the success. So this is Barton Cliffs, which is down the coast, um, eastwards of Sandbakes and uh, um, Bournemouth. So this is in the, the direction of the dominant longshore drift. And as we can see here, these cliffs have slumped. So there's been significant wave cut erosion at the bottom and where there was once a, a 100 meter promenade has actually been eroded by um, you know some severe wave action. The, the reason this is is because lots of the sediment that was uh, destined for this area for the natural process of longshore drift has actually been stopped. It's been stopped by the groins at Sandbank, it's been stopped by the groins slightly further down the coast at Bournemouth and that means this area has become starved of sediment therefore it doesn't have that buffer of protection and therefore these cliffs have been eroded. So we can say Sandbanks Peninsula very successful on, on a local level but if you look at a slightly regional level it doesn't have the same success.